Yo, 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 Kirk Clape, you're here with Teach Mom How. Today I'm going to show you how to make a slideshow on your Mac using the app, the Photos app that comes free on every Macintosh computer. Let's do it. Kurt here with Teach Mom How. I'm going to show you a quick, easy way to make a video slideshow, to make a video with photos and music using your Mac computer using the built-in preloaded photos app. It's really simple. It's probably the quickest way to make a, a quick little professional looking video of your photos. <clears throat> now, if you want a more customizable experience, go down into the description and go back to the chapters on iMovie. That'll be easier for you to follow and you can customize it more. And if your slideshow is gonna include videos I suggest using something like iMovie not Google Photos but if it's just a slideshow or just a video of, of pictures and music then Google Photos is great or sorry not Google Photos I apologize Mac Photos next video I'm going to show you how to do the, the Google Photos slideshow all right so four things you got to do it's this simple you've got to download the music that you want to use if you haven't done that you can download royalty free music um, or you can purchase and download copyrighted music. You then need to import that music into iTunes or into the music app right here, this one. Okay, you've got to get the song you want to use on the slideshow in here, or you won't be able to use it in the Photos app. Then you need to select the photos or videos that you want to use, um, and then you need to make the slideshow, and you do some customizing there, and that's it. And I'll show you how to do that, okay? So... Let's dive in. So first off, here's how you download royalty-free music. I'm going to show you three places you can download free royalty-free music for your videos. First, you need to be logged into YouTube. In YouTube, they have a library of royalty-free music. Let me show you where to find that. There's the uh, under your logo. You click on your logo, and then you go to YouTube Studio. And in YouTube Studio, over here on the left, you're going to see a section called Audio Library. Click on Audio Library, and you'll see all this music. Okay? If you click the play button, you can listen to the song. Now, you can filter this by genre, mood, artist, if you know the artist's name, which you won't, but duration, how long the video is, and so on. You can filter it by whether you have to give attribution if that's required or not. Attribution just means they'll let you use it. They'll even let you um, use it in a monetized video. But you have to put in the comments the attribution. You have to give them credit. They give you a little blurb to copy and paste and you put that in. Okay. Um, so anyways, so here you go. Uh, let's choose something that we want by mood. You can also, if you click this duration button, it will order it by shortest to longest. Or if you click it again from longest to shortest, so that if you're trying to get a song that fits kind of the length you're going for, that's a handy tool. All right, so let's filter this by the mood we want. Let's say we're looking for some inspirational apply. Here's my inspirational songs. 17 minute song, wow. All right, we're going to use this one, Barts and Springs, okay? So you find the one you want, and you hover over it, and over here on the right, you click Download, and it's going to download. You'll see it down here. And by the way, I'm using Google Chrome. That's my favorite, but you can use any browser. Um, it will download that clip, and you'll see that it downloaded right here, okay? If I want to find where that clip's at, I'm going to right-click it, click Show in Finder, and for the sake of staying organized, I'm going to have a second Finder window open where I'm going to navigate to that folder that I created for this project. In my case, it's the Birthday Slideshow, and I'm going to click and drag this song into that folder so that it's all in one place. All my media for this video I'm making is in one place. makes it easy to find it and not lose stuff. Okay, you'll thank me later if you stay organized like this. So there's one resource. That's the YouTube uh, Creator Studio under Audio Library. 
You can also go to YouTube, and they sometimes have there's there's channels that create music, and they let you use it royalty free. So the one that I like to use frequently is called No, no Copyright Sounds. So you search No Copyright. Go. Sorry, I can't type today. Sounds. And there's a YouTube channel that's actually called No Copyright Sounds. And these guys make good stuff. It's high energy. It's like electric dance type music. And... Uh, just choose one that you like. Free. Okay, so we'll use this one. Now, sometimes in the description, they'll give you a link to download it, but not always. So you have to rip it, it's called. And don't do this with copyrighted stuff, but you can do this with stuff that they give you permission to use royalty free, okay? So you need to get this YouTube link. And you select it and copy it. Copy as command C on a Mac. Or you can go to share right here. Click share. And this is the link. You click copy. And that copies this link to your keyboard. Now, in the uh, in another tab, open another tab because you still need YouTube open. You're going to search YouTube to MP3. Okay. Keep hitting my microphone cord here. YouTube to MP3. Now, warning, okay? These YouTube to MP3 converter sites are very spammy. They sometimes have inappropriate images of scantily clad women and things like that. Um, so just beware. And they sometimes have pop-ups. They sometimes try to download stuff into your browser, plugins and things like that. So just be careful of that. Um, and if you do download anything you don't want, make sure you delete it. Okay, so YouTube to MP3 converter. This is how I'm going to get this song off of YouTube and into a format I can use it into my video. Right here where it says, please insert a valid video URL, I'm going to click Command V or right click and paste. Okay, I'm going to paste my link to that song on YouTube and click convert. Now I just wait. They're going to um, put it in a format I can download. Once that's ready, I can download it. Okay. They always trick you. These are ads. Don't click them. Click this one that says download. Now, this here is one of their spammy things that it just popped up. All right. Close that out. But you'll see down here in the right corner, it downloaded this song. All right. So, just like before, I want to stay organized, so I need to put this into the folder where I keep all of my media for this video. So I click on this arrow, click Show in Finder, have a second Finder window open to the project folder. In my case, it's the birthday slideshow. Click and drag this song into that folder. Okay, that's how I stay organized. So there's two resources. You can find royalty-free music, and by the way, if you use these guys' music, you have to give them attribution, which means in the comments you need to say music by no copyright sound and put a link to either their website or their YouTube channel. And uh, so that's one resource is no copyright sounds. Another one is the YouTube Studio Audio Library right here. And now I'm going to show you a third option, which is a website called Ben Sound. Ben Sound I've been using for years. They make good stuff. They don't put out new stuff very often. They make good stuff. Okay. So on Ben Sound, most of this music is free. Some of it you have to buy. But if you click on play, once you find a song you like, all you have to do is click download. When you click download, it's going to tell you what you can and cannot do with this free license. All right. So as long as you don't do any of these things here, you're legal to use this song. If you need to do these things, then you need to purchase it for $34. Click download. Now I just downloaded that song. All right, and again, to stay organized, I'm going to click on the arrow, go over to Finder. I'm going to make sure I have two Finder windows open, and I'm going to click and drag this song into my folder for this slideshow. In my case, again, it's birthday slideshow. Okay. That, by the way, was just asking if I wanted to replace it because I had already downloaded this earlier. By the way, this is my second time recording 
this portion of the video. It glitched and didn't record, so I had to do it again. All right, so I've now downloaded my songs. I've given you three ways to download them with free royalty free music. All right, now if you want to download a popular song, a song you love, you got the right song in mind, it's a copyrighted song for your video, then here is how you will download and get that copyrighted music ready to go for your slideshow. Video. Now, a lot of you are going to want to use your copyrighted music, and now I'm going to show you how to use the copyrighted music um, in your video. Okay, now one of the most common questions that I get asked is how do I add my own songs? Like I've made multiple videos about how to do this stuff, and I always get asked the question, how do I how do I use my own song? Like if I've got a song on my phone, how do I how do I use that song? Well, that gets a little tricky because most of us nowadays just have these streaming services like iTunes uh, Music or Apple Music or Amazon Music or Spotify or whatever and these streaming services and we never actually own the MP3. We never actually download the MP3. And they've spent a lot of money protecting the copyright of those songs by developing software that makes it very difficult, if possible at all, to download and import those songs into our movies, into our videos to, uh, to use. So that said, in the olden days, um, it was really easy. You would just take your CD, for example, and let's go to this folder I created for... Uh, I promise I'll show you a solution. You just might not love the solution because you might have to spend a dollar. Okay, heaven forbid you spend a dollar. So the, uh, where's my birthday shenanigans, birthday slideshow, okay. So in the old days, you would just take the CD, put the CD in your computer. Let's pretend that this is the CD and you'd, um, you'd click and select the files the mp3s and you drag them into your folder that was it that's how you got them on there and then you could go into iMovie and just like everything else you could import them into here just like the songs we downloaded well that's not so easy now because everything is on streaming and things like that there are uh, less than legal ways to rip songs from YouTube or to rip songs from your streaming service uh, I don't encourage you to do that I encourage you to buy them outright and um, and so I'm not going to show you how to do that. You can learn you can learn those practices from other people on YouTube. But the um, thing I will say is, if you've got a song that you actually own, like maybe you bought songs or you downloaded songs. By the way, there's a service through your local library where you can download like ten free songs a week. I forget the name of it. Do some googling, and you can download those as MP3s, or at least you could a few years ago. Last time I did it. Um, or maybe there's some songs that you bought a long time ago, okay, that are in your iTunes library, okay? Like, these aren't songs, this is the Bible, but these were downloaded and put into my iTunes library. Or maybe you bought an actual MP3 album on Amazon, or um, you can't do it on iTunes anymore, I don't think. You used to be able to buy them, like, 99 cents a song, and I don't know if you can still do that. I couldn't figure out how. Anyways... So if you've got them on a hard drive, if you've got them on a CD, if you've got these files somewhere that you can um, grab the actual file, grab the actual MP3 file like we did with the, the copyrighted non-copyrighted music we downloaded and drag it into iMovie, then you're golden. You're good to go with that. But if all you have is just streaming stuff or you listen to stuff on YouTube, um, you're out of luck unless you want to figure out one of the uh, illegal ways to download it, which I'm not going to show you on this video. So here's the way you do it, okay? And this is going to cost you $1.29, but it's super easy, it's legal, and it will work. Now, disclaimer about copyrighted music, you can only use this for your own purposes, okay? You can't monetize a video with this. So um, if you go to Amazon Music, okay? If you go to Amazon Music, you can find... You can search whatever music it is you're looking for, right? And it'll pull it up, and you can have the option to listen to it streamed on Amazon Prime, to buy the MP3 of the album, 
to buy the actual CD or in some cases the vinyl. Who knew that they had this on vinyl, huh? So you can go here. Let's do a search for Garth Brooks since he's my favorite artist. Okay. Click on that and then you've got the option to listen to it streaming, MP3 or the CD. I'm going to click on the MP3. Okay. Oh, and of course, Garth, he's such a sucker. <laughs> you got to buy the entire album with Garth, so I'm not going to use that as my example. Let's go back to The Greatest Showman. You can buy individual songs. So you find the specific song you want. You click the $1.29 button. You choose to pay with US dollars. And you can either play it right in your music or you can download your music, okay? You All right, again, I'm working from home. I apologize if you hear my kids in the background, but that's what it's like with six kids. So here we go. Let's show you how to now import the music into iTunes. You've got to have it in iTunes. If you don't have it in iTunes or in, they don't call it iTunes anymore, I don't think, it's just the music app. Um, but if you don't have it in there, when you come into photos, you won't be able to find the music you're looking for. Okay. So easiest way to do this is to go into the music app, this one here and under playlists, start a new playlist by clicking control new playlist and name that playlist, um, whatever you want, but I'm just going to call it slideshow music. Okay. Then come over here to your finder window and find the music that you that you downloaded most recently, okay? If you don't know where that's at, if you lost your organization, you can search the name. Or easiest is to go back to Chrome if you're using Chrome or Safari if you're using Safari and find the download. So Chrome's real easy. Your most recent downloads show up right here if you haven't closed Chrome. You click this arrow and put click show in finder and it will take you to where that was located on Finder. The reason mine didn't work is because I moved mine into a folder, okay? Because I always recommend moving all your content into one folder so you can keep track of everything for that project. All right, now, so here's a bunch of songs I downloaded for this uh, project. So I'm gonna hold Command to select more than one and click on them. And then go back to iTunes or music. And now I just need to be able to see music and finder side by side and click and drag it into this playlist. And it's going to add my song. Sorry, you got to drag it. Ah, I messed up. Let me reselect these. You've got to drag it onto this right here where it says playlists and then slideshow music right there. Okay, so now I've got five songs that I can use in my slideshow, all right? Now, if I come into Photos, I'll show you how to get here in a second, but you'll notice that if I go to my music library, I don't see the songs that I just added, okay? So that's because I just barely added them, so I need to quit Photos if it's already open. And I need to reopen photos. That will refresh. And now in my music library, the new songs I added to my music library will be synced with photos so I can get started. All right, now I'm back in uh, photos. We've downloaded our music. And now we're going to, we've also imported our music into iTunes. Now we're going to select the photos or videos that we want to make. And then we're going to make our slideshow and add the music to it and everything. It's really easy. So follow along. All right. So right here, I'm in photos. Sorry, got to get into photos. What you need to do, just a quick, this is not a full comprehensive overview or tutorial of photos. I do that in another video that you can find on my channel. But just real quick, you need to understand that all your photos from the most recent being at the bottom to the oldest being at the top will appear here if you click all photos. 
If you break them down by days, they're organized by the days they were taken, months by the months they were taken, and years by the years they were taken, okay? So go to a section of photos that you want to select. And again, these need to be photos that, that you've taken on your iPhone um, so that they're automatically in here. Otherwise, you've got to import them in here, which is possible to do, but I don't show that in this video. Um, but if you took them on your iPhone, they should automatically be in here. All right, so we're going to just select some pictures. Now, you can do this really quickly by just holding Command and clicking on the photos that you want to use. This is like the down and dirty, super fast, get this done in under a minute way of doing this. Okay, let's say that's all the photos I want. Once they're selected, I hold down, I don't want videos, videos don't work very well with this. Once they're selected, I hold down control and click on one of them, and I choose um, create slideshow photos. Okay, again, I get there by going, Control, create slideshow photos. You can name that whatever you want. <clears throat> name it something relevant. And that's going to create a slideshow of the photos that I, I just snagged. And if I decide I want to add more, I can click this Add Photos button and go find other photos that I want to add. Okay. What I recommend doing though because I think this is just a better organization and easier, it takes a little bit longer, is I recommend you create an album of all the photos you want to use for your video, okay? Now, if you're, if you're only using a few, the way I just showed you works great, but if you're going to use a lot of photos, it's a lot easier if you just spend the time to organize it all into one album. So let's just do an example of this, okay? You can go through and you can search them by days, months, or years. There's a few different ways to add photos to the album. But I recommend finding roughly where you want to be. So let's say I'm doing one about these, uh, this wrestling match. Go to that day, open that up, and then you're ready to go, okay? There's 19 more though here. So I may want to double click where it says 19 more. And now I can see everything from that time period, okay? So what I do is real simple, is I click holding command on all the photos that I want to add to this slideshow. Okay, go through and add a bunch of these. All right, good, 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 good. And then I'm going to right click this or control click and choose add to new album. All right, and then that under albums, my albums, you'll, you'll see the new one. You can then um, name that whatever you want to name it, something relevant to what you're doing. And we can add other photos to this album, okay? All right, we can add more photos to this al album by coming back to our photos and selecting more that we want to add. So let's say we want to go grab some from a totally different section. So we come up here, so then I'll right click on this, control, add to album, what did I call it? I called it test, didn't I? Test project. All right, what else do we want in here? Grab these ones. Add these to it. Let's go back and see if there's anything in 2019 that we wanted to add. Okay. Select all the ones. By the way, you select multiple by holding Command. Then you right click by clicking Control and clicking, and choose Add to whatever you named your album. 
All right, once you've got all the pictures that you want in this slideshow into your album, you simply navigate to Albums, Test Project, whatever you named your album. And look at this. If you want to delete any of these, you can select them and right click and then click um, Remove One Photo from Album. You don't want to delete it, you just want to remove it from the album. Okay, that removes it. All right, now we're ready to go. Now, if I click Slideshow, Sorry, I don't want to do that. I want to select all of these in here by pushing Command A. That'll select all of them. Then I want to right click by holding Control and clicking. I want to, I want to choose Create Slideshow in Photos. Name that something relevant to your project. And then over here on the left, you've got your Albums section, but you've also got your Project section. These are your slideshows. Now here's where we, where we can do the customizing and finish off this slideshow, okay? Um, you'll see all the pictures down at the bottom that are in this slideshow. If you want to add more, you can click this button and go choose more. You, at the start, can add a little title to name it. Whatever is relevant for your video. And then you can watch it big by pushing this. You can preview it right here by pushing preview. But now we need to do a little bit of customization, okay? First, we need to determine what theme we want. So if we click on this, you've got about seven themes. The Ken Burns effect, that's where they add motion to all the pictures. Origami is where they, it looks like origami is it like unfolds. Okay, I won't show you all these, but you can play around with them. Okay, just different themes that you can use that are kind of fun for this slideshow. Okay, now each of these themes come with a song, but you may want one of the songs that you downloaded that I showed you previously how to download and import into music. So to select the song you want, once you decide on the theme, you click music, and this is what music is selected right now. Okay, if I go, if I expand this under music library, this is where I can now see all of the songs that I imported so that I could put them into my into my uh, slideshow. Okay. Now sometimes it's hard to find them. So you, if you know the name, you can search. So I'm going to go over here to iTunes real quick. And the song I want to add is this one called Barton Springs. It's one of the royalty-free songs that I downloaded. So if I go back into Photos, and I search Barton Springs, it should be in this music library. There it is, Barton Springs. Okay, I can test it. All right, so under selecting music, you'll see that it has two songs. It has, excuse me, it has Reflections, that's the theme song, and that's the one I added. I don't want the theme song, I just want the song I downloaded. So I, I X'd out of the other one to make it disappear. And now I need to adjust my time a little bit, okay? Now what this does is custom, custom is going to make the song end when the pictures end. And the pictures are all set to run for a certain amount of time. They can be fast or slow, okay, depending on how long I want the pictures to be on the screen. So you can play with this and see what speed you like. And that's going to make it adjust and fit that, or and be however long that is. And then the music will just fade out. If I choose fit to music, it's going to make the picture stay on long enough, long enough to use the whole song. Okay? If I do fit to music, it will stretch or condense the pictures to whatever length they need to be to fill the entire song. So play around with it and see what you think looks good. You can preview the whole thing here or watch it here. And I'm going to go back to custom. Now let's assume I'm done. Let's assume I like how it looks. I previewed the whole video. I simply just go up to File, Export, Slideshow. I name it re something relevant. I'm going to leave mine as Test Project. Choose where I want to put it. I recommend having a folder on Finder dedicated to whatever your project is. Mine's called Birthday Slideshow on this project. Click Save. Now it's exporting. As soon as it's done, I can share this. I can put it on YouTube. I can do whatever I choose to do with it.
Okay, so our slideshow has finished. If we go to Finder, again, that's this little guy, go to the folder that we chose to keep our content in, you should be able to find my video. It's called Test Project. If I push spacebar, that will open up. I can make sure everything works. Well, I'll always watch it all the way through. I'm not going to for the sake of time. But make sure you're happy. If you're happy with it, it's now time to share it with the world, okay? So I'll now show you how to share this on YouTube. Once we're logged into our YouTube account, you're going to click this. Uh, let me just go to YouTube. I'm already where I want to be, but let me show you. Okay. All right. So here on YouTube, we're going to click this Create button right here, this little camera at the top. Click Create and upload video. Now I can click select file and it will open a, a window and I'll just navigate to the folder where I put my video. Okay, and then I could click open and that would upload it. But I usually do it this other way because it's easier. I usually do what you've seen me do a hundred times now. And I have my finder window opened on top of it. And I grab the video and I click and drag it and I let go. And it's going to start uploading. All right, I can change the name now if I want. I can add some um, a description. If you're trying to show up in search engines, you'll want to do something that's relevant to the keywords you're, you're targeting. I can add this to a playlist if I'd like to, or create a new playlist for it. Um, choose if it's for kids or not. Usually the answer is going to be no. If you put that it's for kids, then you won't be able to have um, comments on it. By saying it's not for kids doesn't mean it's like R-rated. It just means that you didn't make it specifically for kids. Okay. All right, age restrictions, that should be no. You shouldn't, if, if you're making videos that aren't appropriate for people over 18, shame on you. You shouldn't be doing that. Um, click more options. You can add tags here. These are things like keywords people might search for your, your video. It'll also, well, yours probably won't suggest these. This is because I pay for a thing called TubeBuddy but it suggests, TubeBuddy suggests keywords for me. All right, choose what language your video's in. You don't necessarily have to do this, but it's a good idea to do it. If you want to know when you made this video, you can choose the date it was recorded. Choose what license you want. Usually just leave the standard YouTube license. Choose a category. Choose whether you want to get comments. This is a People are mean on social media, so allow all comments, just lets anything go. Hold potentially inappropriate comments for review. That means if YouTube thinks that they left a, a bad comment, an inappropriate comment, they'll warn you and you can decide if you want to approve it. Or you can hold all comments for review or you can disable comments. If you disable them, nobody can comment. If you hold all for review, that's what I do on kid videos, um, then you can read the comments and delete the ones that you don't want. Okay. All right, then you click next. If you have the option to monetize and you want to, you can turn that on. Um, you may or may not have that option. Okay, we're gonna say off for now, just in case you don't have that option. Click next. Video elements, these are, you know how on YouTube, um, a video will play and it says, hey, watch this video, or check this video out, or go to this website or whatever, and it has a link you can click. That's where you add those kind of things. It's right here. That's end screens and, and cards. End screens happen just at the end of the video. Cards can happen anywhere in the video. A little thing pops up and, and links you to another video or playlist. Okay. I'm just going to leave that alone for now. Now you decide the visibility of it. Okay. Is it going to be private? Okay. Let me explain the differences between these and you can choose what you want to do. Private means that nobody can see it unless you 
specifically add their email address to a safe list for that video, and then they're allowed to see it. That's the most private it gets. Unlisted means nobody's going to find it in a search engine. But anyone who has this link, which you can copy by pushing this rectangle right here, okay, you can copy that and send that to people. Anyone who has that link will be able to see the video. So you may send it to five people, but if they send it to five people, then now there's 30 people that can see it. Okay, And if they send it to other people, so in other words, anyone with the link can see it, but it's not going to show up in search engines. All right, Public means anyone can see it. Anyone can stumble on it from any corner of the internet and watch your video. Okay, I'm going to leave this one on public, and I'm going to set it as a premiere because I think it's kind of fun on your YouTube channel to have a premiere show up that says, hey, new video is playing in two minutes, and it tells all your subscribers, and they can watch the premiere. Or you can schedule it out to have it go on on a certain date and time. Okay, we'll just go with the public and set as instant premiere. This shows me the pro how far along it is. It's already uploaded. The processing is 54% done. And now I click publish. All right. This is going to finish processing. As soon as it's done processing, the premiere will start. And it'll give you like a little countdown timer for about a minute. And then your video will play if you chose to do a premiere. From then on, you just take that link and you share that with anyone you want to share that with on Facebook or emails or texts, whatever it is. That's how you upload your video to YouTube. Okay. And here's how you now uh, share your video on Facebook. Go to your um, your page and just cl either click right here to start editing or click photo video. Okay, once you're in here, you can either click this photo video and navigate to it to the folder it's in, or you can do what I prefer to do, which is click and drag. Have the um, finder window open. Navigate to the folder where your video is. Click on your video and drag it in. Write something about it. All right. <laughs> and mine's in Portuguese, but that says publish. Okay. Click publish. And it now uploads your video. By the way, if that publish button wasn't allowing you to click, it's because it hadn't finished uploading your video. All right. And there you have it. Once that's done processing, this is the progress. You're going to be able to watch it and people will be able to see that video on Facebook. So that's it. Um, I'm not going to show you on Instagram how to do this, but what you got to do is you've got to get this file onto your phone because you can only upload to Instagram on your phone. But get this file to your phone and then um, you can upload it to Instagram from there. So. That's it. Hope you liked that. Hope that was helpful. And if you want to share this on Instagram, you'll need to transfer this to your phone um, and then add it from your phone to Instagram because you can't, you can't upload to Instagram from a computer. All right. So that's it. You guys now know how to make a slideshow using Mac Photos app.